Joining me in this edition of INN CEO Talks is Chris Evans of Winsome Resources. Chris, welcome to INN CEO Talks. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm excited to talk to you because you're down in Perth, Australia, but we're talking about a jurisdiction that's near my home country, Canada, but Quebec, Canada, and in particular, lithium. Tell us about Winsome Resources, and then let's talk about why you chose uh, you know, Quebec, despite its, you know, great reputation, it's a long way from home for you. And maybe it's the, the opportunity is so great that you go, it doesn't matter how far we go to find good opportunities. Yeah, that, that's certainly a part of it. Um, it. It is quite an interesting story, I think. We were a relatively new company. So we listed on the ASX in, on the 30th of November last year. And um, <clears throat> we're, we're lithium focused, uh, but based in Canada, as you pointed out. And we've been pretty successful so far. In the last um, six months, our share price has done well and our uh, IPO was hugely oversubscribed at the time. Um, and I think I've been putting this down to a trifecta of success, success factors which we possess as a company. And these are, um, it's the fact that we're, we're into lithium and at the moment with a huge demand and the subsequent or the current and, and future uh, predicted shortfalls of lithium, uh, any, any mining company that's associated with lithium has tended to do well. Uh, and we've got some great assets, which I'll describe in a moment, which um, make us even better. So we're lithium focused. Uh, as you pointed out, our assets are in Quebec, um, which again, I'll talk about Quebec being a, a fantastic mining jurisdiction for, for all sorts of reasons. Um, but also being listed on the ASX, um, Australian investors tend to be, they tend to like early stage plays a, a bit better. And they've certainly woken up to the um, electric vehicle and, and lithium revolution that's occurring in the world um, a, bit, a bit quicker than Canadian investors seem to have done. So for example, there's, there's similar lithium plays to us in Canada that list on the TSX that haven't enjoyed the uplift and the support that we've seen as a result of being listed on the ASX. So uh, when, we, when I had the opportunity to conduct this IPO last year, and we, we thought at the time about, do we do it on the ASX or the TSX? Uh, as I say, for the, the support we got, the ASX was great to list on. Um, and, but it's a pleasure having the assets in Canada and, and developing a project over there. It's uh, quite uh, a, a rich uh, series of projects that you have right now. Uh, at what stage are you at? Because I, I know you're an advanced stage exploration company. With the four projects that you have in Quebec, what stage are you at with each of them and what are the results looking like? Well, our flagship project is Canset, and that's in the James Bay region of Quebec. And, and all our projects, I should say, are, are hard rock lithium projects. Um, and um, as some subscribers may know, there's two, two sources of lithium in the world. Um, one is from hard rock mining, and the majority of that comes from Western Australia at the moment. Uh, and that's digging the rocks out of the ground, concentrating uh, the lithium in them, and then it gets converted into the final product, which is lithium carbonate or hydroxide, which goes into uh, electric vehicle batteries. The other source is large brine lakes, which predominantly occur in South America. Uh, they have lithium salts in them and uh, they take a lot of water, they take a lot of land and um, they produce lithium carbonate or hydroxide on the spot. So ours are all hard rock lithium, which is um, a relative, uh, in terms of technical complexity, um, they're, they're less technical, technically complex than, than the brines. So our, our flagship project, CanSet, has had about five and a half thousand metres of drilling done on it historically. Uh, so we know that there's great, um, a great deposit of lithium there at fantastic grades. And for anyone who knows about lithium grades, uh, ours are exceptional at Canset. Uh, it outcrops on the surface that the, the lithium containing spodumene, or I should say the pegmatite is the rock. Uh, the spodumene is contained, is the mineral, and, and that contains the lithium. So it's a bit of a, a, a geologically um, a complex concept to get your head around perhaps. Um, 
but we have 3.7% lithium oxide over a 17 metre interval from the surface in our, in our most successful drill hole. Now that is world class uh, grade of lithium. At Canset, uh, as I say, we've, we've done five and a half thousand metres of drilling historically, and we just completed 2000 metres of drilling ourselves, uh, increasing our knowledge of the ore body that's there, and also looking for extensions to the ore body. At Canset, we've got 395 claims and our drilling and exploration is only over about 15 of the claims. So we've got a lot further to look and we've got a lot more to develop. And that's what we'll be go, uh, doing from now over the next two to three years to really develop the resource at Canset that we know is there. We just don't know how big and how high grade it is yet. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, with results like that, are you already starting to attract some attention from other uh, major uh, mining companies? Not only major, major mining companies, um, it, it's amazing the attention we're getting from uh, all sorts of uh, downstream users, uh, mm -hmm. all the way to uh, auto manufacturers. Um, but Elon Musk himself texted within the last two weeks, or he tweeted, I should say, uh, that Tesla may have to go into lithium mining in order to secure the lithium they need for their batteries. So we're certainly seeing a lot of attention from all sorts of areas. Um, for example, at Canset, our most advanced project, it's realistically, it's going to be four years before we're producing lithium from there. But in terms of uh, mining projects, that's not a long time. And companies like Tesla, for example, are thinking, well, if they can get their, if they can form partnerships, which they have with other mining companies, with, with companies like us to guarantee some lithium in four years time, then that's a great move for them. Yeah, they're looking to have that direct source rather than buying off the market because let's uh, also remember that uh, uh, Tesla is, is also, and Elon Musk are big into the battery and solar power uh, uh, sectors as well where they need to store energy that they've created. So the demand just from that one company is high. And then uh, how important is it then that that lithium be from a North American uh, source? Uh, because we're seeing really markets around the world say, well, I want you to be local and I want to be able to have a guaranteed supply. Yes, that, that's a very important point. And, and again, while we think it's, it's fantastic for us and our shareholders that we have our assets in Quebec, uh, mm -hmm. at the moment, the, I described the fact that roughly 50% of the world's hard rock or, or the world's lithium comes from Australia and it's mined and concentrated in Australia. The problem is though, the final conversion into that lithium carbonate or hydroxide they've described, all occurs at the moment in China. Um, so the, the world market is very beholden to China um, for the supply of those critical lithium uh, materials. Um, as I said, most of the rest of the lithium in the world comes from South America. So 85% roughly of the world's lithium comes from those, it, you're reliant on those two areas. North America itself has very little lithium resources currently. Um, so lithium is on the critical minerals list in both Canada, the US uh, and Australia for that matter. And Canada and the US are working feverishly to develop an internal battery materials supply chain. And we think we're going to play a critical role in that. Um, in so, addition to that. Uh, yeah, oops, sorry. Please go on. No, you were going to add, uh, I'll let you add, yeah. Well, in addition to that, uh, another very important factor, of course, and, and the reason where the world's trying to transition to, uh, to electric vehicles is to move to a lower carbon economy and lower the ESG footprint um, uh, it, every, of every country in the world. Now, the fact that Quebec, 99.8% of all power in Quebec is generated by hydroelectricity, a renewable form of electricity. And, and that's very important because to, con to the conversion process uh, and in fact, the mining and concentration process of the lithium products is traditionally very high, uh, produces a large carbon footprint because it's energy intensive. The European Union uh, from 2024 has mandated that all batteries are labeled with the carbon footprint uh, of all the materials that are contained within them. And then by about 2026, there's specific targets that batteries have to meet in order to be sold in the EU. Now, if you don't have a renewable source of energy to produce your lithium products that go into those batteries, uh, it's going to severely restrict your markets, the markets into which you can sell in the future. 
So I think that's another a very important point and, and a bonus for us being in Quebec. I agree. Uh, you take a look at James Bay Hydroelectric uh, power plant that is there. Uh, you've got uh, you know an unending source of, some, of uh, clean energy that you're going to be able to work with. So going forward, you know we know that you're an advanced stage exploration company, but do you envision that you're going to build this out and operate it as yourself, or you know what are your long-term plans for the company? I think uh, having been involved uh, and developed a lithium mine here in Western Australia and being involved in uh, lithium for probably uh, the last six or seven years, uh, my view is that we should always be approaching this as if we're going to develop it ourselves because that allows us to have that forward view uh, and, and start to put in the, the processes and the procedures right now to ensure that this mine's going to be a success, whether, whether it's us or someone else that ends up developing it. Um, if uh, I often see companies that have a that clearly have a view that they just want to pump it up and sell sell the company to someone else, um, I think things are missed when you do that. So we will approach this as if we are going to be developing the Canset project and producing lithium ourselves in four or so years, um, and then everything else will take care of itself. And I think that'll best serve our sh our shareholders. Uh, in right. addition, there's uh, there's a lot of other opportunities in Canada as well. There's quite a few ASX companies who are now uh, have found lithium and are developing mines similar to ours and some TSX companies as well. But relatively, it's underexplored for lithium compared to, say, Australia, which has been a hotbed of lithium exploration for the last five or so years. So for us, again, being listed on the Australian uh, Securities Exchange and having access to a lot of capital, I think there's a great opportunity for us to um, acquire other projects in Canada. And we stated that during our IPO, and it certainly remains one of our priorities uh, to look around and uh, use the access to capital and the and the support we have from the market uh, to potentially uh, yeah, acquire some new properties in Canada. So for investors, looking at Winsome Resources, you've got a great team, you've got great projects in a great jurisdiction with uh, lithium prices uh, rising, continuing to rise. A uh, good opportunity here and a good time to take a look at uh, Winsome Resources. I think it really is. Uh, as I say, we've had some early success. You know, our market capitalization has more than doubled. In fact, it's uh, almost three times uh, what it was when we listed six months ago. Um, and we haven't really, we've been putting in place our exploration plans, but we haven't released any drill results yet from our most recent campaign. Um, we're about to start our summer exploration and we're on the lookout for new projects. So I think the good news is really to come, and therefore there's a lot of upside for, for investors uh, in Winsome Resources. Well, I hope you're going to come back and give us an update in a couple of months because it sounds like you've got uh, an awful lot of uh, great potential ahead of you. Thanks for your time today. Thank you very much. It's been great, uh, and I look forward to catching up again in the future.